there is a serious resource crunch on all levels. The fundamental problem is, in 1947 when we got our independence, we were thirty-three crores of people. Today we are hundred and twenty-five crores of people. That's a four time, four times, four hundred percent increase in seventy years. So naturally there will be resource crunch, you can never create. Nobody is growing at four hundred percent, isn't it? <laughs> so you can't grow anything at four hundred percent, so obviously everybody will have less and less as time goes by. But of course there are fertility clinics running busy in Chennai and everywhere. <laughs> That's another matter. Another important aspect is, this is the bane of democracy. I mean, I'm not saying we should leave democracy and go elsewhere, there's no other option, we have to stick to it and see how to make them responsible. But when you give somebody just a five-year mandate, in that last one year goes in election. In between, of course, there are three states election, that another one year goes. So after all, you're giving him a three, three and a half year mandate. When somebody has only three and a half year commitment to what they want to do, none of the long-term goals will be taken into consideration. Only short-term goals will be taken into consideration, it's a natural outcome of that. There was a time then where a king ruled for twenty-five years or thirty years, now in his time whether that kingdom prospered or went down, people could make a judgment. In three and a half, four years, making that judgment itself is not fair. A nation of this size, how can any man, even if a superman comes, how can you turn everything around and make everything beautiful and wonderful in three and a half years' time? Hundred and twenty-five crore people, diverse people. I'm saying it is a dichotomy in which we are. We cannot go into any other mode of governance other than democracy, there is no other way for us. At the same time, how to make it worthwhile for the person who occupies that seat to invest in long-term goals? If he invests in long-term goals, he loses his election for sure. So obviously, people are not able to recognize what is our true well-being. So still I think we need to educate the citizenry that they can understand. If a political law leader talks about long-term goals, people can understand this as, oh, this is our well-being. Right now the electorate does not understand that. So naturally the leaders try to do the shortcut methods where none of the long-term goals get addressed, unfortunately. So ecology, education, all these things are back burners because they won't win you votes. After all, a democratically elected leader is always thinking about votes, you can't blame him. You can't blame him, isn't it? I'm telling you, if you were in the game, you wouldn't be thinking of the vote, you would, isn't it? So we need to educate the people what is a true well-being, what is a sham of a well-being. This must come to the hearts of people, then we will… they will also have the opportunity to focus on long-term goals. Any long-term goal means, whether it's an individual life or the life of a nation, any long-term goals means short-term sacrifice. We must understand this, always.